Hello and welcome to part 13 of our course on scientific writing. In the previous video we discussed how to make your writing more energized. In this video we will look at condensing it. Shakespeare tells us that brevity is the soul of wit. The National Science Foundation tells us that the project description may not exceed 15 pages. And at PSI we tell you that the essay will not exceed 30 pages. Page limits exist for a reason. When you find yourself on the side of the reviewer, you'll realize it's a good one. Given space constraints, you should think about how to condense your writing. The first option you could take is using nasty formatting tricks. For example, using smaller font, playing around with paragraph word spacing, playing around with the margins, packing things into paragraphs when they should be bulleted lists, and shrinking figures to the point where you need a magnifying glass to read them. If you do this, you will end up with a document that looks like this. Formatting is a powerful tool, but you should use it for good, not for evil. Formatting should be used to add clarity and structure to your document. White space plays a crucial role in this. Think of it like music. Music isn't just the sounds, it's also the silence between the sounds. White space in your document is like the silence between the sounds in music. Without the space, there is no structure. Without structure, you just have noise. On behalf of all reviewers, evaluation committee members, and thesis examiners on this earth, I beg you to never submit a document that looks like the one on the left. Promise that you won't do this. Okay, so now that you've committed to never using nasty formatting tricks to reduce the length of your document, what should you do instead? You should tighten up your ideas and your language. First, you should identify what the key message is at each level of your document. Then you should clean up your story arcs. And finally, you should use the delete key. Your document should only contain content that supports your key message. So first figure out what your key message is, and then remove anything that doesn't add support to it. Remember from part 9 that you are telling a story at various levels. You need to figure out the key message at each level. Figure out what is the key message of the whole paper, then eliminate any sections that don't add to that key message. Figure out what is the key message in each section, then eliminate any paragraphs that don't add to that key message. Figure out what is the key message in each paragraph, then eliminate any sentences that don't add to that key message. Let's try this as an exercise. Pick a section in your paper or thesis, and then determine what the key message is for this section. Identify any paragraphs that don't add support to this key message, and if you find some, remove them. If you find a paragraph that you're not sure whether you should keep it or remove it, you may need to clean up your story arcs first. Now is a good time to pause this video as you work on the exercise, and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. Okay, so I hope you've had a chance to work on that exercise. If you had some trouble deciding whether to keep or delete a paragraph, you might need to clean up your story arcs. But even if you didn't, there are good reasons to do so. It avoids repetition of ideas, and avoids linking ideas unnecessarily. If you need some more practice on this, refer to exercise 8.1 in part 8 of this course. The final step in tightening up your ideas is to use the delete key. In the rest of this video, we will explore several candidates for the delete key, such as redundancies, things that are implied, modifiers, meta discourse, and verbosity. Your writing has redundancies if you use several words where one does all the work that needs doing. Let's look at an example. I will describe and explain a new computer algorithm for computing decay rates. The words describing and explaining are essentially the same thing in this context. And the algorithm is for computing decay rates, so a computer is implied. We could instead say, I will describe a new algorithm for computing decay rates, which is 27% shorter. What about this example? Most, but not all, of the decay rates were found. Most means majority, which means not all, so it would be shorter to just say, most of the decay rates were found. Sometimes things are already implied, and therefore don't need to be said anywhere. For example, we introduce a novel approach for finding decay rates. But if you're introducing it, it is novel. The same goes for new and for the first time. In fact, 
Some journals even have policies against using such words, for example the physical review journals. It's shorter to instead say, we introduce an approach for finding decay rates. What about this example? There is evidence that superradiance might not be a simple interference effect. If there was no evidence, you wouldn't have said it and given a reference, so it's shorter to just say, superradiance might not be a simple interference effect. Now maybe you want to emphasize that it's not confirmed, but the word might already does that. There are also some kind of modifiers that you would like to avoid. Bad modifiers try to intensify the word, but they don't add any meaning. Let's look at this example. The entire reaction sequence takes less than one hour to complete. The word complete implies that it is the entire reaction sequence, so it would be shorter to just say, the reaction sequence takes less than one hour to complete. Now you could go one further and also delete to complete since even that is implied and just say the reaction sequence takes less than one hour. That's 28% shorter. What about this example? This modification dramatically reduced computation time. Words like dramatically are empty amplifiers. They do no harm, but they also don't help much. So it's shorter to just say this modification reduced computation time. Now you might be thinking that the word dramatically gave some notion of the degree of reduction in computation time, but this is rather subjective. What does dramatically mean? Is it 5 times, 10 times, 50 times? You should quantify that. If you wanted to do so, you could say, this modification reduced computation time by 50%. Now it seems like it's only 11% shorter, but it prevents you from quantifying that later on in the paragraph, so it actually saves even more space. Here is a list of empty amplifiers for you to look out for. Can you think of any others? If so, feel free to share them in the comments. Another thing you can avoid is talking about what you're doing. For example, we found that the series did not converge. Meta discourse often doesn't add anything except length. It would be shorter to just say, the series did not converge. What about this example? In this paper, we derived the transition probability. If this is the first time these results are being presented, of course it was done in this paper. It would be shorter to say, we derived the transition probability. Here are some phrases to look out for when trying to eliminate meta-discourse. Can you think of any others? If so, you can leave these in the comments as well. Finally, let's talk about verbosity. Verbosity is the sum of multiple types of filler. It creates sentences that ramble on endlessly. And it's suggestive of insecurity. Maybe the author is afraid to make a definite statement. Here is an example. The results show that some enhancement in the computation time can be accomplished by first applying dimensional reduction of poles and then computing the decay rates numerically. Now compare this with the following. Dimensional reduction of poles, prior to computing decay rates numerically, yields results faster. The second one says the same thing, but it's more to the point, and it's 47% shorter. Applying all of these tips will help you condense your writing, but don't go overboard. Words that build coherence and flow are not unnecessary. Any word that helps your reader understand does useful work. Let's look at these examples. Writing can get too barren. Filler can add flow. Use it carefully. It would be much nicer to say, writing can get stripped down to the point that it becomes barren. Some filler can add flow, so use it, but carefully. So let's do one more exercise where we get to use the delete key. Pick a section in your paper or thesis and read it, making note of any redundancies, things that are implied, modifiers, meta discourse, and verbosity. In many cases, it will make sense to delete these, so do it. But don't go overboard, because any word that helps your reader understand does useful work. Now's a good time to pause the video as you work on the exercise, and try not to spend more than 10 minutes on it. Okay, so I hope you've had time to do that exercise. Let's just summarize what we've seen in this video. Page limits exist, and they exist for a good reason. You should use formatting for good, not for evil, and tighten up your ideas on language by finding the key message, cleaning up your story arcs, and using the delete key. In the next video, we will wrap up this course, and I will give you some tips on editing your work. See you next time!